Okay, good morning everyone. So today we shall discuss operative procedure in optics. Hi. Hi. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Any? It is happy. As I said, we will be discussing an operative procedure procedures in optics today. So, coming to the introduction, obstetric operations are surgical procedures, requires aseptic precautions, and some protocols should be followed. The protocols are preliminary are anesthesia, lithotomy position, full surgical asepsis, emptying of the bladder, or the essential or preliminaries of the obstetric surgery. Operative procedures in optics are dilatation and evacuation. For abortions, dilatation and evacuation, then suction and evacuation, then vacuum aspiration, and life saving procedures like cervical and surplus. These are all the surgical procedures for abortion. 
when coming to the destructive surgeries like craniotomy, evisceration, decapitation, cleidotomy or the destructive surgeries in obstetrics. Then coming to the vaginal surgeries or episiotomy, all these are vaginal procedures only, confined to vagina or episiotomy, forceps delivery, ventus and breech extraction. And coming to the abdominal procedures, cesarean section, symphysiotomy, postpartum hysterectomy are the abdominal procedures. These are the various procedures which require surgery in obstetrics. Then coming to the abortion, shall discuss one after the other. Then expulsion of the and extraction, expulsion or extraction from its mother and embryo or the fetus weighing 500 grams or less when it is capable of dependent when it is capable of independent survival. The 500 grams of fetal development is attained approximately around 22 weeks. Any abortions performed before 22 weeks. The procedures for those are abortion may be spontaneous or induced. The spontaneous abortions may be isolated and recurrent. When we see recur when we say recurrent, when the abortions are more than three consecutively, we call it as a recurrent abortion. These recurrent, these spontaneous abortions may be threatened, inevitable. Threatened means in spite of <coughs> medication, we constantly stop the process of abortion. That is called threatened abortion. The inevitable or this also where we treat threatened abortion with treatment we can control the process of abortion and we can continue the pregnancy in inevitable in spite of our complete trials they are not uh, let the pregnancy continue so they are called inevitable abortion the complete abortion or the abortion which will be complete spontaneously without any assistance. Then incomplete means part of the products of the pregnancy will come out and some part is retained inside the uterus. That is called incomplete abortion. Missed abortion, it is the death of the fetus inside the uterus before 22 weeks of gestation. Septic abortion, this is a criminal, otherwise called criminal abortion, where they introduce abortion with secondary infection. That is called septic abortion. So induced abortions are legal. They are called medical termination of pregnancy. The illegal, which are unsafe, they are induced by the local dayas with putting some stick or some other means to cause abortion by putting some drugs in the cervix. These are all called illegal or unsafe abortions. In threatened abortions, the features will be, the height of the uterus will be corresponding to the period of gestation and the patient comes with a slight bleeding per vaginum. On examination, the uterus per abdomen, the uterus corresponds to the period of gestation and when we do the vaginal examination, cervix will be completely closed and slight bleeding will be there. By the we can by doing ultrasonography when the fetal heart is present, and with these features, the height of the uterus corresponding to the period of gestation, and with all these findings, we can come to a diagnosis threatened abortion. This can be treated by giving tocolytics and complete rest and sedatives. Innovative abortion, in spite of our treatment, the abortion will not stop. It is innovative. That means the cervix will be completely dilated and the process of the conception will be starting coming. So by scanning, the fetal heart will be absent and the process of conception will be inside the uterus or it is in the process of expulsion. In complete abortion, the entire process of consumption comes out 
and the uterus will be almost empty and uh, part of the placental bits may be seen inside the uterus. Incomplete abortion, the part of the products will come out and the height of the uterus will be less than the period of gestation and the products of conception will be felt through the cervix. That is the incomplete abortion. Missed abortion, the fetal heart will be absent, the entire process of concept will be shrunken and gets attached to one of the corners or the walls of the uterus. That's called missed abortion. Septic abortion, here the patient comes with the history of pregnancy and the history of induction and when it gets infected, it's called a septic abortion. The patient complains of foul smelling discharge per vagina. And coming to the cervical incompetence, inability of the uterine cervix to retain a pregnancy in the second trimester. Mostly the cervical incompetence, the second trimester abortions are common. In the absence of uterine contraction, this abortion takes place. So this may cause threatened abortion or miscarriage. Main element is cervical and surface operation. This is done by putting a cervical stitch. This is called surface operation. The principle of this operation is reinforces the weak cervix by non-absorbable plate tape placed around the cervix at the level of the internal loss. Timing of operation done when the cervix is dilated and bulging of the membranes is there. The cervical incompetence will be able to diagnose by ultrasonography and then we have to treat. The types of stitches what we put are Shirodkas and McDonald. The first one is McDonald stitch where we put an encircler around the cervix, taking few bites in the cervical mucosa and we'll be knotting it in the anterior surface of the cervix, anterior the cervix. Okay. Then coming to the Shirodka technique, here also the procedure is almost the same, but we'll give a transverse nick with the knife in the cervical mucosa anteriorly and also in the posteriorly. And we pass a suture, non-absorbable suture, either it's in the form of silk, one zero or one black braided silk, or then we have to ligate it posteriorly. This is called Shirovikas technique. Both the techniques will work equally. And the post-operative care after doing encephalitis operation, bed rest for two to three days, weekly injection of 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone corporate, 500 milligrams IV every week where to give. That is called Proliton Depot. That is available in 250 milligrams and 500 milligrams. That we can give either intramuscularly, we will give it, or IV also you can give, but mostly we prefer intramuscular. Then Isoxy Supreme, that is Duvet Lab, 10 milligrams tablet thrice daily, avoid uterine irritability. So, advice on discharge is usual antenatal advice, avoid intercase and avoid rough journeys. Removal of the stitch, we have to remove the stitch at 27th week of pregnancy when the fetus attains clinical viability or if labor pain starts or the features of abortion appear, then we have to cut down the stitch. If we retain the stitch without cutting, it will tear the cervix and cause cervical tears. If the patient goes in for labor or abortion with the stitch. So methods of termination of pregnancy. Coming to the methods, various methods of termination of pregnancy. In first trimester, there is after 12 weeks, the medical termination, the drugs used are mefipristone or mefip Priston and mesoprostol, that is PG even 
and then methotrexate and misoprostol, then tamoxifen and misoprostol. These are the drugs what we use and surgically menstrual regulation. This we can do menstrual regulation by putting a Kerman's cannula and uh, this we can do up to six weeks of gestation. Then vacuum aspiration also we can do. Then suction evacuation and cure it is. With suction, electrical suction by putting a cannula inside the uterine cannula, uterine cavity, we can do suction evacuation. Then dilatation and evacuation will dilate the cervix with the Hagos dilators. This may be with rapid method or slow method. Rapid method will dilate with Hagos dilators and do the evacuation. Or if we want to have a slow method, we can dilate the cervix with laminaria tents. Thus, coming to the second trimester, these are all the procedures in first trimester. Coming to the second trimester medical termination of pregnancy, that is 13 to 20 weeks. Prostaglandins, mesoprostol, or 15 methyl PGF2 alpha, that is carboprost, and dinoproston, and either analogous use intravaginally, intramuscularly, or intraamniotically. That is one procedure with prostaglandins for second trimester medical terminations. Then the other procedures are dilatation and evacuation up to 13 to 14 weeks. Then intrauterine in installation of hypertonic solutions like extra amniotic ethacridin lactate prostaglandins. The extra amniotic saline infusion isotonic with a trans cervical catheter balloon, that is follis catheter we can put, then intraamniotic hypertonic urea 30% or saline 20%, intraamniotically we can do. Then oxytocin infusion, high dose used along with ether, with either of the above, two methods we can use oxytocin infusion in conjugation with intrauterine installation of hypertonic solution or 30% urea or 20% hypertonic. So then oxytocin infusion, then hyster hysterotomy. Abdominally, we can less very rarely done because we are leaving a scar on the uterus. Hysterotomy is a procedure when other meth all methods fail we can research a hysterotomy. That is cutting open of the uterus and doing. Then coming to the dilatation and evacuation. Dilatation of cervix and evacuation of the process of conception from uterine gravity. This is one stage operation. Dilatation of cervix and evacuation of the uterus done in the same city. Then two stage operation. First phase slow method by dilating the cervix and second phase is rapid method. Coming to the one stage operation, this is done, incomplete abortion, inevitable abortion, medical termination of pregnancy and hydrate for more. The steps are dilate the cervix to desired extent, products are removed by ovum forceps and intravenous methadone point to MD is given to promote the uterine action and to help for the expression of the products of conception. Uterism must seized by manually with both external and internal times. Then vagina and the perineum is toileted with sterile vulval pad. Vulval pad placed inside. Then two stage operation is, this is done, the indication of first time is abortion, missed abortion and hydrated form. The first phase interaction of laminaria tent, that is magnesium sulfate or sponge. This can also be used instead of laminaria tent. Then coming to the second phase, further dilatation of cervix with metal dilator followed by evacuation. Patient is brought back to the OT after 12 hours, conducted under IV diazepam and general anesthesia sedation. This is the use of 
laminaria tent. Laminaria tent is a sea weed which is put inside the cervix. These are sterilized with the spirit. Then they are put in the cervical canal. They, by hygroscopic action, they dilate the cervix because this laminaria tent is a sea weed which expands slowly and causes the cervical dilation. Then after dilatation, the uterine walls are strapped with curate. This is a slow dilatation method. Then rapid dilatation method, dilate the cervix with Hegas dilators, then remove the product of consumption after curatives. The complications are excessive hemorrhage due to incomplete evacuation or atonous uterus. So because of the atonous uterus uterus or some products are left inside, the bleeding excessive bleeding hemorrhage occurs. Then cervical injury. Injury of cervical laceration, uterine perforation can occur with an inexperienced obstetrician. Then shock. Then sepsis, hematometra, continuation of pregnancy, or when we fail to do proper evacuation, the pregnancy may continue. Then comes the other procedure, suction evacuation. Either products of conception are sucked out from uterus with the help of cannula fitted to a suction machine. General seizure is usually not needed. Because if we use general anesthesia, the amount of bleeding will be more. This procedure will do by simple sedation or by cervical block anesthesia. Indications are MTP during first time is inevitable abortion, incomplete abortion, and hide it for more. These procedures are adopted. The cannula is introduced, rotated, and moved in, in and out. By this, we will be sucking the products of conception completely. Then ultrasonography and under TVS dilate the cervix. Intravenous method in 0.25 milligrams is used. Cannula is introduced into the uterus. Tip should be in middle of the cavity for proper sucking of the products of conception. Firm uterus, minimal vaginal bleeding, toileting place is sterile vulval plant inside the vagina. End point of suction is denoted by no more material sucked out, gripping of the cannula by the contracting small uterus, grating sensation, appearance of bubbles in the cannula. These signs are present when the suction or the powers of con conception are completely sucked out. Complications are similar to dilatation evacuation, like extra bleeding, perforation, cervical lacerations. These are the complications. Coming to the menstrual regulation, the aspiration of endometrial cavity within 14 days of missed period. That means around 6 weeks. Missed period in women with normal cycles. Done in outpatient or office procedure. Cannula inserted and attached to 50 ml syringe for suction. This is called a mop syringe or menstrual regulation syringe. Otherwise, it is also caused called lunchtime abortion. Then the next procedure is similar to menstrual aspiration is highly effective 98 to 100 percent. This is vacuum aspiration. They put the cannula inside the uterus cavity, connect the cannula to the suction apparatus. This is called vacuum aspiration. Then it may be manual vacuum aspiration or collective vacuum aspiration. Coming to the other means of induction of abortions, intrauterine insulation of hypertonic sedation, extra amniotic insulation of 0.5 to 
ether cradle lactate, done through follies character, removed after four hours. So we'll put in a follies character inside this uh, bricks into the uterus. Then we'll inject distilled water or normal solution, about 30 ml into the follies character. Then we'll uh, put 0.1% ether cradle lactate or it will be just like acriflavin and remove the cat after four hours. Then the process of abortions take place. Then other types of abortions are intramniotic insulation of hypertonic cell. Empty the bladder, peridom you put in the helping needle and in then you put into the amniotic cavity through abdominal root. Preliminary amniocentesis is done. About of saline instant number of weeks of gestation to 10 ml. So if the gestation is 20 weeks into 10 ml to be added, that means 30 ml of hypertonic saline has to be put into the amniotic cavity. Infuse slowly at the rate of 10 ml per minute. Induction abortion interval is about 32 hours. Then liberation of prostaglandin is following because of the amniotic epithelium and decidua. Excites the uterine contraction and expulsion of the fetus. Baby is killed by a saline abortion. The saline injection causes severe burns to the baby in the womb. So that will kill the baby. Need an extra amniotic hypertonic saline injection. Coming to histotomy, extracting the process of conception out of the womb before viability, performed through abdominal root. And indication is failed MTP causes where dilatation and evacuation are contraindicated as in fibroid uterus and uterine anomalies where the other procedures of medical termination pregnancy are contraindicated due to such a structure. Coming to the destructive operations in obstetrics, operation did this Diminish the bulk of the fetus to facilitate easy delivery through birth canal. The types of destructive operations are craniotomy, evisceration, decapitation, and clidotomy are the destructive surgeries adopted in obstetrics. Craniotomy is operation to make a perforation on the fetal head in a bony part and evacuate the contents followed by extraction of the uterus. Extraction from the uterus. So we'll, here we'll be reducing the size of the head by perforating the cranium from a bony part because if we do in the membranous part, the, the sutures will be closing again. So if we perforate in a bony part, it doesn't get closed. So we have to do perforation in a bony part, then remove the contents of the brain through this perforated hole. And indications where we would like to do craniotomy are cephalic presentation, producing obstetrical labor with dead fetus, we will do craniotomy. Hydrocephalus, even in living fetus, because of the large, huge size of the head, will perforate it in. We will do craniotomy and uh, deliver the fetus by reducing the bulk of the fetus. Hydrocephalus, even in living fetus, we do it. And thirdly, in the interlocking of head of twins, where we have to do craniotomy and deliver the fetus, even if the baby is alive. There are the various steps shown for craniotomy. We are performing, we prefer to do craniotomy in the mostly in the 
ध्वनि पात्र स्थल Other destructive operations are decapitation. Head is severed from the trunk. Delivery is completed with the extraction of trunk, and then decapitated head per vaginal. Then we have to extract the head decapitated head with craniotomy hook. We catch hold in the foramen. We put it in the foramen magnum, and we will extract the skull. The indications are neglected shoulder position. With head of the fetus, where neck is easily accessible, we will do decapitation. Then interlocking head of the twins also we will do decapitation. Evisceration. This is removal of the parts of the fetus by cutting with the evisceration scissors. Removal of the thoracic and abdominal contents. Contents piecemeal through an opening at the most accessible site, together with. Spondylectomy. Then, neglect. These indications are neglected shoulder presentation in dead fetus and in malformations. Cleidotomy. Reduction in the bulk of the shoulder girdle by division of one or both clavicles. We cut the clavicles with evisceration scissors and we reduce the size of the shoulders. Then we deliver. The baby. This is done mostly done in dead fetuses. Clavicle is divided by embryotomy scissors, long straight scissors. Only in dead fetuses with shoulder dystocia, we adapt cleidotomy. The complications of cleidotomy are injury to the urovaginal canal, postpartum hemorrhages, then shock due to blood loss and dehydration. And subvenation and injury to adjacent viscera. These are the complications of cleidotomy and evisceration. Postoperative care and destructive operations are exploration of utero vaginal canal and self-retaining foley scatter to be put inside the form inside. Following craniotomy. So, dextrose saline drip to be continued. Ciftrioxone IV is given to prevent sepsis. Then, the other vaginal procedures are epistotomy, planned insertion of the perineum and posterior vaginal wall during second stage of labor. Indication of threatened perineal injury. Rigid perineum, then forceps, breach, hospital posterior, or face presentation are the indications for epistotomy. Objective to enlarge the vaginal. Objective is to enlarge the vaginal introitus to minimize the overstrain of the muscle. Overstrain and muscle rupture causing perineal tears. Then types are types of epistotomy are mediolateral, median, lateral, and J-shaped. Mediolateral or downward and outward diagonally from the midpoint of the foreshoot. This is where we are giving this foreshoot, and we are cutting mediolaterally the epistotomy. Median is center of foreshoot, two point five centimeters posterior, and laterally. Condemn noides, J shape is not done widely. So mostly we will give medial lateral epistotomy, either right medial lateral or left medial lateral. Here the advantage is, in spite of the big head, if the epistotomy extends, there won't be any problem, and it will not injure any of the viscera. So, if we give median or center of the foreshoot two point five centimeter posteriorly, if it extends, it will cause lateral tears. It may be first degree laceration perineum, second or third or fourth degree laceration. So, these are the various advantages of 
medial lateral episiotomy. The relative merits and demerits of median and medial lateral episiotomy are if we give a median episiotomy, the muscles are not cut. Blood loss is least, repair is easy, post-surgery comfort is maximum, healing is superior, wound disruption is rare, and dyspareunia is rare. If you do a medial lateral episiotomy, relative safety from rectal involvement from extension. If necessary, the incision can be extended in medial lateral episiotomy. Coming to the demerits of median episiotomy, extension, if focus may involve the rectum, not suitable for manipulative delivery or in abnormal presentation or position. As such, it is used, is very much selective. Then coming to the medial lateral episiotomy, the position of tissues is not so good, then blood lies is little more, post-operative discomfort is more, relative increase in instance of wound disruption, then dyspareunia is commonly more. So these are the disadvantages of medial lateral episiotomy. The steps of episiotomy are preliminary cell, thorough swabbed with the thorough swabbed with SA antiseptic and solution and drape the perineum. Perineum is infiltrated with 10 ml of 1% lignocaine, then incision suture structures are cut out, posterior vision wall, superior and deep transverse perineum muscles, fascia covering muscles, and branch of the pudendal vessels, and nerve and subcutaneous tissue in the skin are the tissues that are to be cut from inside outwards. Then the suturing will also be from inside outwards that will put in three layers. One is vaginal mucosa, then muscle tissue, then skin. Step three, timing of repair soon after the expression of the placenta. Soon after the expression of the baby and the placenta, you have to repair the episiotomy. Preliminaries are lithotomy position, good lighting, wound area clean with solution, blood clots removed, vaginal pack to prevent blood uses, and after repair, vaginal mucosa and sub mucous tissue, perineal muscle, the skin and subcutaneous tissue. For both the things, vaginal mucosa, we can use number one zero catlet or number zero vitreal. And for, nail, for perineal muscles, we can use one zero vitreal or one zero catlet. The skin and subcutaneous tissue, we can use vitreal rapid. It's a synthetic material. Where it, where it gets absorbed very fast, within three weeks. And then we can put a non-absorbed sutures in the way of nylon, proline, or these are the sutures to be removed. These are all non-absorbed sutures. The absorbable sutures are vehicle rapid, we can use and uh, monocryl also we can use because these are absorbable sutures. Once we put these sutures, the patient need not come again for the suture removal. This is a cut section to show various parts of the perineum. The post-operative care in episiotomies are swapping with cotton swab, soaked in antiseptic solution, comfort from myself, compression, ice packs or analysis. Ambulance allowed to move out, out of the bed. Removal of stitches on six day. If you put non-absorbable switches like silk, nylon, or thread, or proline, you have to remove them. Complications immediate. Complications are extension of incision, vulval hematoma, infection, and wound issues. 
the remote complications of dyspareunia, chance of perineal laceration, scar endometriosis. So summary is the avoid options methods, dilatation curatives, suction evacuation, saline, abortion, and surgery and hysterotomy. Pilot IUDs are not contraceptives but abortifacients. Pills, contraceptives, prostaglans, induced abortion. So this is the end of the story of the surgical procedures in objects. In Scythian section also included in the surgical procedures, but it is entirely a different topic. We shall discuss later. In Scythian section is the cutting open of the uterus and delivering the baby near term. Or if there is any abnormal presentation, we can do Scythian section before term also. That we will discuss later in detail. We'll, in that we will discuss what is Scythian section. What are types of cesarean sections? What are the steps of cesarean section? What are the complications of cesarean section? What is the LSCS? And where we have to give a transfer sensation natures? Where we give to a longitudinal sensation natures? What are the indications for classical cesarean section? What are the indications for lower segment cesarean section? We shall deal in detail when we speak about the seasonal sections. Okay, thank you. If you have got any doubts, you can ask. Another. Do you need even to sell for that?